This is our first video on analytical geometry and we are going to discuss gradients. So in grade 9, you would have learned how to find the gradient between two points. And here we have point A and point B. And if we want to find the gradient, we would say the gradient between A and B. And then we would say that would be the y of b minus the y of a over the x of b minus the x of a. So let us quickly see how we would substitute the y value in coordinate b. So that's the y of b is equal to 4. And we subtract the y value in coordinate a. So the y value is 2 over the x coordinate of b, which is 7, minus the x coordinate of a, which is 1. And then we simplify. So it's 4 minus 2, which is 2, and 7 minus 1, which is 6. And I can always simplify further. So the gradient between the line A and B now is a third. Now some important things to remember. It's always the difference of Y's over the difference of X's. You always need to place your difference of Y's at the top over the difference of X's. Another thing to remember in terms of our substitution, if I place the Y value of B first, in my subtraction in the numerator, then I must also place the x value of b first. So that is then the difference of y's are always at the top and the difference of x's are always at the bottom. And if I place coordinate b first, then I need to place it first at the bottom as well. Now, let us compare the gradients of these two lines, A, B, and C, D. If I look at the gradient of A, B, I would say that it is bigger than zero. Regardless of what the values in the coordinates are, this gradient would be bigger than zero. Another word for bigger than zero is the gradient would be positive. And how I know from just looking at the diagram that the gradient would be positive is that the line is increasing from left to right. So when we work on the Cartesian plane, we read graphs from left to right. And if I go from point A, I can see I'm increasing to move to point B. So therefore, this line is increasing. And when a line is increasing, then the gradient is positive, or we would say bigger than zero. Now, similarly, we can look at the line CD. We can say that the gradient of the line CD would be smaller than zero. In other words, we would say that it is negative. And how we know that is that we start from the left. Remember, we read a graph from left to right. So from left to right, I move downwards. And when I move downwards, we say the line is decreasing. And when the line is decreasing, then it has a negative gradient, which means the gradient would be smaller than zero. Now, if we have two lines that are running parallel to each other, then we can say that their gradients would be equal. So the gradient of line EF would be equal to the gradient of line HI. And when we prove gradients are equal, we can conclude that EF is parallel to line H I. And when lines intersect at 90 degrees, then the product of their gradients would be negative one. So the gradient 
of JK multiplied with the gradient of line LM would be equal to negative 1. And when we get to a property like this, we can say JK is perpendicular to LM. And lastly, before we get into a few examples, we can see that collinear points, those are points that are on the same line, have the same gradient. So therefore, I can say that the gradient of AB would be equal to the gradient of BC, and that will be equal to the gradient of AC. So I can form three different line segments, but when they are collinear, their gradients would be equal. Notice this does not prove parallel lines. This proves that these three points all lie on the same line. 